bandwidth for this podcast is brought to you by CashFly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. Welcome back to MacRate Studio. And it's now midsummer. We're in the height of baseball season. And why am I bringing up baseball? <laughs> Oh, because you're watching a Giants game tonight, or uh, I would love to be watching a Giants game tonight. Yeah, but that but that's almost the case. So I I had uh, several requests for building a scoreboard kind of effect in motion. You nice. know, we see the scoreboard and words come up and everything. Right. And uh, it, it can be a little involved, but the basics are very simple. And I thought I'd lay out the basics here so that people can take it from there oh, and run with it. Can't wait to see it. So let's jump right in. So um, I'm starting just uh, with some text here, and uh, I want this text to look like it's on a scoreboard, which it doesn't at all right now. Nope. The, the, the approach I'm going to take is using replicators. All right, but you're starting is, with just basic Helvetica text yeah, on I've a just black got, background? Yeah, just some text, and that's what I want to show up. I also, I have this other thing I want to show where it came from. If I go to the library and then to content and particle images, I've got this thing called basic blur. Okay, there's this right down there. And I've, I, that's going to be kind of my light. Now you could you could get a graphic as your light. You could get anything. Doesn't you want, matter something. what it is. That's the one you chose. Yeah, and it, it will have, look a, have a certain look to it. Let me bring it over here so we can see it. But that's going to be kind of one of the little lights that lights up that okay. little guy there. Let's. I'm going to command slash so we can see it there. Okay. Nice. So um, I'm going to F1 and just hit the hooked arrow for transform to move back to the center. Now I'm going to replicate this guy. So I can use a replicate bottom button at the bottom right corner here, just at the letter L, to make copies of it. And um, let's stretch this thing out because I want to make a big old scoreboard here, right? And then it needs more copies, so hit F7 for the heads up display. We'll increase the number of columns. Uh, we'll increase the number of rows. Maybe not quite so many there. And maybe we'll scale this thing down a little bit. I'm going to the replicator inspector and reducing the scale of these little dots. Something more like that. And then maybe some more rows. And I can't do any more than 20 columns here in the heads up display. So in the inspector, I'm going to add the columns and do more columns. So I've kind of got a light, I've kind of got a grid of lights. If you don't want to see all these X's here, you can hit command slash, which turns off the overlays. Oh, that's nice to turn it's off the It's also under the view menu over there, show overlays. I think it's better with them Okay. All. So now we can kind of see uh, all those dots. Now, you might think, oh, I'll just use an image mask. To mask up to the text. Yeah, to mask up the text, which will kind of work, but I want to show you why that's, that's not necessarily a good idea. So let's actually increase the columns a little bit more and the rows a little bit more so we really have a pretty dense grid. And so let's also turn off the text. And we're going to mask this replicator just to see how this works. So I'm going to choose Object, Add Image Mask, and then I'm going to drag the text into that little... Um, either in the well in the heads-up display, or, on the layer or you itself. can drag it right onto the image mask. Okay. Oh. okay. That looks good. Well, sort of, but all it's doing is cutting off. Like, uh, that, that's not that, what a scoreboard would look no, like. No, you're right. It's cutting off each of the lights, right? Yeah, it doesn't look so good. So that's not really quite what we want. We don't want to see lights cut off. So masking is not really the way to go here. So I'm going to Command-Z to undo. Instead, what we're going to do is this. We're going to select the replicator, and in the heads-up display, there's a shape pop-up menu. Now, in uh, earlier episodes, we looked at the shape pop-up menu and a few things. We looked at geometry, geometry which what is what has to go in there if it's geometry. Uh, a shape? A shape. Right. Yes. Yeah. Okay, that's that's it. Right. Stop right there. You that's did right. Exactly uh, right. Don't say right. anymore. Right. <laughs> but here, I'm going to want image. And you might think an image is just a graphic, but an image can also be a text layer. So that's kind of the trick to know about this. So I'm going to choose image, then I'm going to drag the text layer in here. Oh, and now, nice. now see how different this is. Oh, now that's starting to look like it's actually built out of these dots. There's nothing's being cut off anywhere, right? So now that starts to get a lot more interesting, and you may need to adjust the number of rows and columns to get it look just the way you want to. Like an 80s see. video game, pixelated text on yeah, the screen or whatever. Yeah. You, what have you. And then you might also want to see the um, the background. You, you know, through the turned off lights, you frequently want to see those as well. Right. I don't have quite the right number to make it really visible. We have to kind of play around with it. Grand slam, something like that. Right number. I'm just I'm playing with the number of rows and columns here to get the right number. Something like that. Yeah. Okay. But I so, think they get the idea. Yeah, you get the idea there. So what I'm going to do though, I'm going to duplicate that command D to duplicate the replicator. 
Command left bracket to move the duplicate below. And the duplicate, I'm going to change rather than being the image, have an image source, I'm just going to go back to a rectangle. Okay, so now the background is all those guys. Uh, same things, but instead I want it to, them to be dark. So in the, the replicator, rather than the color mode being a reg, original, I'm going to choose colorize. And I have to scroll down again. I'm just going to make them real dark. Not too dark, because you kind of want to see them. I see. So I don't know. So I don't know if you'll be able to see this on the screen, uh, you guys, but there were kind of now we've got these lights on top of those lights, right? So those are the turned off ones sure. in the background. Let me go back to the foreground ones. They don't shouldn't really look white. So again, let's change the color mode to uh, colorize and scroll down and choose more of a yellow, sort of bright light. And you could you could jazz this up a little bit more with a glow filter to make right. it glow. But that's the basic idea. And now the cool thing is um, you can animate this sucker uh, to come onto the screen <laughs> that's like you a would. Technical phrase. Yeah, animate the sucker um, <laughs> with a sequence replicator behavior. Oh, one of my favorite replica uh, yeah. behaviors. So library uh, behaviors, and then replicator. We have this one little guy sequence replicator behavior. Just drop if it I on there. Drag it onto that guy. And I'm going to go right to the inspector, to the behavior inspector. And actually, let's trim it in the mini timeline so it's not too long. I'm going to hit O to try it. It's out point, so it's about two seconds long. And let's say at the beginning, I'm going to add a parameter. What do we want to animate? I'm going to choose to animate the position of those lights. And I'm going to animate them in X. I'm going to animate them from, change the sequencing it's to from. It's almost like I don't understand why from isn't the default. Yeah, the default. Awesome, you want to do from. So I'm going to slide them off the screen. And now, if we play, it doesn't look right, right? It's, they're animating from the center out. Right. That's because the replicator itself, if we go back to the replicator, has an origin of the center. So I'm going to change that to right. So the replicator itself starts on the right, and now these things kind of fly in. That's really cool. And the only thing I might want to adjust is the spread a little bit, because right now one means only one row is coming in at a time, but if I crank that up, now each of those are kind of flying in to spell out the word. That's okay? really cool. So kind of neat, right? And yeah. you can take this any any direction you want. You can have the brightness of these change over time. You can have them add a filter and keyframe it to have them really shine. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, that's one approach <laughs> to building a building a scoreboard. That's great. So how can someone learn how to do that? What what of your six tutorials at Ripple Training do you recommend <laughs> to so do this? This, this thing itself isn't covered, but the whole way of using replicators is covered in the replicator tutorial. Excellent. Yeah, Excellent. there's one that goes into detail. So replicator is one of the most powerful it's amazing. parts of motion. Well, I, I would have to say that this particular episode, he did knock it out of the park. So <laughs> There you go again. <laughs> sorry. So I want to thank you again for watching another episode of MacBreak Studio. We'll see you next time.